Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to your fourth webpack tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about Babel Loaders. Okay, so what is a loader anyway? Well, when it comes to webpack, a loader can help us perform transformations on our code. So imagine we're creating an application and we want to use ES2015 in it or ECMAScript 6. Now, we know that not all browsers can support every single aspect of ES2015. So what we need to do is transform that ES2015 code into vanilla JavaScript before it's served to the browser. So a Babel loader can help us do that. It can convert that ES2015 code into normal JavaScript, which the browser does understand. And it can also convert JSX, which is a combination of JavaScript and XML. We use that with React into vanilla JavaScript as well. So that's what we're going to take a look at in this video. We're going to take a look at the Babel loader to transform some ES2015 code into normal JavaScript. But there's loaders for other things as well, such as SAS, which we're going to take a look at in a later tutorial. So how do we use the Babel loader? Well, there's three steps. First of all, we've got to install the Babel core and the Babel loader via the NPM into our project. So we'll do that first of all. Then we have to install any presets that we're going to be using to perform transformations. For example, if we want to transform ES2015 code, we have to install the ES2015 preset. If we want to use JSX and transform that, we have to use the JSX preset. So we're going to install whichever preset we want as well using npm2. Then finally, we have to configure the webpack.config file to tell webpack to use the Babel loader to transform our code. So we're going to perform all of these three steps now. Okay, so first of all, here's the Babel website. You can find it at babeljs.io and read more about it there. In a nutshell, it says you can use next generation JavaScript today. So read that for more information. It's pretty good. So back in our file, so far what we've been doing is compiling just regular JavaScript. But say I want to use ES2015. Well, let's give this a whirl. So in ES2015, we can use constants. So I'm going to say const and then give this a name, I'll just say message equals, and then we'll copy this dude right here and paste it up here. All right, module.exports equals message, like so. Now, if this was run with Webpack in the bundle.js right here, if we scroll down to the compiled JavaScript, you can see it's not changed that constant into a variable. So it's not changed our ES2016 or 2015 code into vanilla JavaScript. So that's why we need the Babel loader and the Babel preset to do that for us. Okay, so that's what we're going to install now. So first of all, what I want to do is come down in here and say npm install. And we're going to install Babel core. We're going to install Babel loader. And we're also going to install those presets. So that's the Babel hyphen preset and the preset that we want to use is for ES2015. So it's hyphen ES2015. And then we're going to save all of those to our dev dependencies. So hit enter, let those install. Now when it's done, just check out your package.json file just to make sure everything's been installed. There they are. Sweet. Okay. So now we can use these dudes in our project. So the next step is to configure our webpack.config file. So we've done the first two steps, which is in install this, install this, and then install the preset. So now we need to configure this dude right here to tell webpack that we want to perform these transformations. So the way we do that, let's put a comma there, is to use the module property. And then this is an object, and this might look a little confusing at first, but dead easy once you've got the hang of it. So then we say we want to use some loaders. And this loaders is going to be an array. We put all the different loaders we want to use in our project in here. So each loader is an object, and this object contains different things. So let's do this object. So this is the first loader, and we're going to say test first of all for our first property. And what this is going to do is test particular files, okay? Because obviously we don't want this loader to run on every single file, like HTML files, or this file, or this file. We just want it to run on JavaScript files. So we want to perform a simple test to only run on files which have a .js extension. Now the way we do that is by using a little regular expression. So I'm going to do that, then .js, and then it's going to be a dollar sign, and then forward slash again. So that there is going to test 
for any JavaScript file, any .js file. Okay, and we're going to use that loader on that. Next, I want to tell Webpack to exclude certain files. I don't want it to run this loader on every single JavaScript file I've got here because there's loads of JavaScript in here and I don't want it to run on that. So I'm going to say exclude and then forward slash and it's going to be the node modules folder like so forward slash and then it's not going to run this test on this folder just the JavaScript down here. All right, cool. So comma, next I want to say which loader I'm going to use for this. And of course it is the Babel loader. So I say loader, Babel hyphen loader. And then we need to do one more thing. We need to say which presets we're going to use. Do we want to transform JSX code or do we want to transform ES2015 code? So we need to specify that right here. So comma, and the way we do that is by saying query. And then this is going to be an object. In this object, we're going to say presets that we're going to use, and this is going to be an array of presets which we're going to use. Okay, now we're just converting ES2015 code into vanilla JavaScript. So let's use the ES2015 preset. Okay, so let's save that now, and that's our webpack.config right there done. And if I come down here and run webpack again, press enter, this is going to run it all through. And when it's done, if we go to the bundle.js here to see the output file, and let's just give it a second to update. Okay, it's done. Let's open this again. Go right down, and we can see the const is changed to a variable because Webpack and Babel now know that we want to transform that ES2015 code into vanilla JavaScript, which is what we're doing here. We're changing that const into a variable. So that there is gonna work for whatever ES2015 code you have in your project. And it's gonna convert it into browser ready JavaScript code. Pretty cool, right? So I did say we can use it to convert JSX code as well into normal JavaScript. And we're gonna be doing that in my React series, which is gonna come up straight after this Webpack one. So we'll leave that for them.